Have you ever wondered why every movie poster seems to look exactly alike? Well, you're in luck. I'm Abby Esparza with Innovato Touch Plus, and this is a movie poster design in Adobe Photoshop. In this course, you'll learn how to make a movie poster from start to finish. We'll be looking at some of the best movie posters ever made and then jumping right into Photoshop to create our very own. We'll be looking at all of the popular color grades, typography, and composition trends that seem to tie whole genres together. Once you know the rules, then you can break them. Learn everything from the standard movie poster sizes, storytelling through composition, and of course, the secrets to movie poster typography. We'll be using fonts, photos, and graphics all from Envato Elements, your one-stop shop for all your movie poster creating needs. However, if you want to save even more time, you can check out Place It. Create whole movie poster mockups in seconds, all inside your very own browser. So make sure you stay tuned till the very end so you don't miss a thing. This is Movie Poster Design in Adobe Photoshop. This lesson will quickly cover some of the main movie genres, their iconic posters, and their overarching trends. First things first, while there are quite a few different genres, uh, action, horror, indie, romantic, romantic comedy, straight comedies, dramas, fantasy, sci-fi, western, um, it's essential to know both your primary genre and your subgenre before starting your own poster design ideas. Knowing your genre and subgenre will give you almost an instant roadmap to movie poster effectiveness. While flipping through these groups of iconic posters, you can catch the visual trends right away. Now, you are more likely than not well aware of a movie's primary genre, but pinpointing the subgenre is just as crucial as you will want to combine trends from both genres. This will let the viewer know exactly what they are getting into. Remember, selling the movie is the only job of a movie poster. Check out comedies. You will notice big, bold, and red typography on a white backgrounds with the ensemble cast up front and center, or a combination of a vibrant red with bold white text, like in the comedy horror Shaun of the Dead. The official poster for The Hangover, however, took a slightly different route, featuring golds, high contrast, and even some slight lens flares. However, given the movie's level of action and suspense, it still fits as these are common trends among action movies. Hot Fuzz is another even better example of a comedy using its subgenre to a great effect in the poster. This works particularly well with a movie like Hot Fuzz as it's a satire of action cop movies. Here we have two mock-ups of two similar but different horror movies, both incredibly similar to one another, even in typography, but one reads more maybe psychological horror, while the other a paranormal horror. Even though they are both in the horror genre, they target two potentially very different kinds of people. Every genre has a popular composition, color, typography, and even font face for one simple reason. They have proven to be effective. One more time, a movie poster's goal is to sell a movie. And you start that sales pitch with the genre. And these trends effortlessly convey the genre without the viewer having to do anything other than give a quick glance. We'll be doing a deep dive into all the juicy details here soon, but first we need to talk about size dimensions, bleed guides, and color modes. This lesson will go over the proper printing size and format for large print movie posters. I want to cover the standard movie poster dimensions right off the bat, as they are large, a whopping 27 by 40 inches. If you think you may have trouble working with that size of file, don't worry, as it's the ratio that is what is important here. The aspect ratio of a standard movie theater poster being a bit more than a ratio of 2 to 3. So for now, let's make our canvas 27 by 40 inches and size down later just a bit as needed, if needed. Then we can size back up when it's printing time. That way I know that my ratio will be correct and my composition won't be compromised. 
Next, if your design will be making it to paper, make sure to design in the CMYK color mode. It'll give you more accurate colors to the final printed product over RGB colors. And lastly, crisp prints start with a high resolution. Set your DPI or resolution to 300. This will make sure your image prints nice and sharp. DPI standing for dots per inch. So 300 little dots of color per inch of paper. Now we just need to create our safe area or trim line and bleed lines. The trim line will prevent text or logos from being chopped off the final output or print, while the bleed guide will ensure there isn't a random white line on the edges of your printed poster. We can do this very quickly by adding guides to all four sides of our poster, hitting Ctrl R to bring up the ruler, and then clicking and dragging to create a guide. They should snap right to the edges of the canvas. Now let's go to image canvas size and add 0.25 inches to both the height and width, pressing OK. This will be our trim line. To create our bleed guide, let's repeat the same steps. With that, I am happy to say our canvas is all prepped and ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, if you need to, now would be the time to shrink your canvas down just slightly. Just work with as big as your computer or resources will allow. And up next is storytelling through composition. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to show character hierarchy, establish basic themes, and catch the viewer's attention all through the composition of your movie poster. Everything starts with composition. The secret is to try and focus on one or so genre and movie related images that will convey the main message and conflict going on in the movie. So try and focus on just one idea within the film that best captures the film as a whole. Try not to put too much spotlight on actors unless they're already established stars or familiar faces. The main point is your story and you have to convey that first and foremost. Now you also want to give yourself a solid base, making sure it's not overly busy. Focus on iconic imagery, something that will really stick with the viewer long term. Here in the final Harry Potter movie poster, it features two characters facing off, their conflict and their final battle. The movie poster for It is wonderfully minimalistic, using iconic imagery, the balloon, to sell the whole movie without even showing Pennywise the clown, the main villain of the film. Now, if you do have an ensemble cast and you really have to show them, um, think of character hierarchy. Character hierarchy will tell the viewer who the main characters are and who are the lesser side characters. Your main hero or team, potentially, should be the second largest to largest subject on the poster, only smaller to the villain, who should be placed hidden and obscured looming over everything to show he is indeed a villain. All other side characters should be smaller and tactfully placed. All in all, you were really better off with single, large, impactful imagery, however. Another quick tip is to create a triangle. Not quite literally, per se, but create lines with your composition that bring viewers' eyes somewhere crucial, like the title. The Titanic movie poster is a wonderful example of this. So with these things in mind, let's create a quick action poster. First, here we have a colorful layer and two textured layers set to overlay. This will set the scene for our action movie poster. Note the color, a yellow-orange. We will of course be pairing it with blue. You will see blue and orange all over movie posters. And it's because they are complementary colors with no already pre-established associations, like green and red for instance. We will dive a bit deeper into color A a little uh, later on. For now, we have three subjects we want to feature on our poster. A woman, a child, and a masked man. I already have all three of my subjects extracted and prepped and ready to go. You can check out how I extract my subjects in both my previous courses, uh, The Beginner's Guide to Photo Manipulation and The Ultimate Guide to Hair in Photoshop, both on Envato Tuts Plus. Now for our masked man, I did some slight editing. I'm adding a shoulder pad to his right shoulder to create symmetry and balance, which is also a great thing to shoot for in a movie poster design. 
with our three subjects all prepped and ready to go, let's say in this movie the woman is the main character, with the child being the story's linchpin, a child she needs to get from point A to point B, and the masked man is the big bad of the movie, the main villain. The woman should be in full view as the main character, the child should be smaller as a secondary character and likely the more vulnerable of the two. And finally, the main villain should be looming over both, partially obscured. Large to convey threat, obscured to convey mystery. This will also create a triangle effect, an easy to understand layout showing a character hierarchy. Also, our character's goggles help tie them all together, um, with a simple effect done using a layer set to screen and then painting with a hard round brush. The villain is given a different color to make him distinct from our heroes. For his eyes, I use a curved layer. We can finish up the composition by adding in hints of the environment that the movie takes place in. Using a soft round brush, we can paint a line of color, again a blue teal to go with the orange, and then clip a photo of sand dunes, setting the layer to overlay, adjusting both the brightness and contrast, and then removing the color. You can do this between each character to help really tie and blend them together. Also adding some separation, so they don't end up getting lost inside of each other. Now let's change over to this horror movie poster mockup. See, the secret is to use simple imagery to invoke moods and emotions related to your movie. So if working on a horror movie, try to make viewers feel tense and scared, invoke ominous imagery, playing with both conceptual and surreal visuals. Here I use just two stock images, blending them together using layer masks, and that's really about it. However, if this was, say, a slasher movie, then you would want to go for maybe something a little bit more in your face, as you'll want to catch the attention of slasher fans, meaning blood a lot of the time. Or maybe an iconic weapon or mask, like Jason, Freddy, or Michael Myers movies. To wrap things up, here are three general tips. Give it order. It should have an obvious and well-organized layout that is easy to follow. Make it beautiful. It should deliver the message in a visually pleasing way. Even if it involves gore and horror, you want people to want to look at it. And finally, keep it focused. Make it precise and communicate no more than one idea. Simple is good. With that, we can dive a bit more into color and color grades. Next up, we'll be learning all about movie poster color theory. So first, you want to think about color pairing and your genre, bringing up the classic dynamic duo of orange and blue again. Not only are blue and orange a powerful combination because again, unlike other color pairings, they don't conjure cultural associations, but they also sit on opposite sides of the color wheel, invoking hot and cold and explosive action. And Hollywood noticed it and never stopped. If you are designing an action flick, like our mock-up here, then blue and orange may be the way to go. We also have white and red for comedies, which creates almost a blank canvas effect and allows you to feature a subject, coming off very light and easy to digest, perfect for a comedy. Then the blues and greens for thrillers and dramas, giving a tone of seriousness and, of course, drama. Next, we have bright, bold, vivid yellows, reds, and blues, um, your primary colors, for offbeat indies. They often go big and bold to stand out from the typical Hollywood movie poster, as they have to compete for attention among big actor names and even bigger budgets. And then we have muted grays and blues and uh, deep greens with hints of red for horror, often with heavy use of shadow, contrast, and darkness to really convey horror and fear, making things almost claustrophobic. And a fair bit of red, of course, or maybe all red sometimes, to invoke uh, some good blood and violence. Now, there are always exceptions, of course, but these are general trends and give you a good jumping off point. Try and choose a concise and consistent color scheme right away, building it into the design. Then from there, you can enhance using adjustment layers. 
Here in our action poster, we have a color grade consisting of just four adjustment layers. These enhance and adjust the current orange and blue of the poster. A curves layer with the scion curve pulled up into the shadows, which you do by clicking this point and dragging inwards. Now the magentas just slightly pulled into the shadows and slightly removed from the highlights, which are down on the opposite end here. And then an S curve created in the yellows, done by clicking to place an anchor and then pulling, forming an S like shape. Next, a levels adjustment layer to slightly increase the contrast by adjusting the toggles, pulling the highlights inward. Next, I use a hue saturation layer to slightly shift the color hues into a, um, a bit warmer orange and um, a more teal blue. And finally, a selective color layer focusing on the blacks, adding in some cyan and magenta and removing just a touch of yellow, which will make the shadows a nice cold blue and not as green. In the horror movie poster mockup, we have an even simpler color grade, bringing in a dark shadowy green, starting with levels just slightly. Here, we have a selective color adjustment layer, adjusting the cyans, blues, whites, neutrals, and blacks. Finishing up by giving everything a wash of green with a color fill layer, set to multiply at 22% opacity. This color grade does a particularly good job not only bringing in this green tone, but also deepening the shadows under the bed here. To recap, think of the emotions you want your film poster to invoke. Fear, mystery, optimism, um, and then choose a color scheme that fits. Keep your colors consistent and impactful, more is less most often. And then finally, use a color grade to further enhance and adjust your color scheme, um, really tying things together. With that, we can finally move on to font and typography. In this lesson, we will cover how to make an impact using movie poster typography. First things first, you want to have a text hierarchy, similar to a character hierarchy. Your most important text goes first. The title, for instance, should be absolutely huge. You should avoid fonts and colors that don't let the title pop, and choose ones that make it readable. You don't want the viewer to ever uh, struggle to read the title. Together with the movie's title, you should include a tagline or memorable slogan that says more about the movie's main message. Next, mention the director, the leading actors, um, the due release date, and a block of credits to thank in the bottom part of the poster, um, this often being the smallest bit. In cases where there's someone really famous who you really want to emphasize in the movie, uh, those can also be written on the poster, but only if you deem them to be absolutely indispensable. Only add what is absolutely crucial. So if those actors' names aren't selling the movie, don't include them. Now, the same as with color and visual themes, pay attention to your titles and make sure you're using a consistent font. Again, make sure the font is readable, sticking to one to two fonts max, and ensure that the color of the text contrasts with the background it is placed over. You can use the typography as the main subject of your poster or add some thematic elements to it. You can also keep it nice and minimal, with very little editing to the font face. The second is often the safer bet if you are not specifically skilled in the art of typography. Again, there's nothing wrong with going minimal and simple, as it is often the most effective route. Now, as far as font faces specifically, as with colors, there are trends. Arial, Helvetica, Gotham, and Futura... Futura, excuse my pronunciation of some of these font names, um, are commonly used for comedy title treatments. 
When it comes to horror, you want Trajan. The sharp edges of this thin serif typeface conveys that creepy feeling you might be after, especially when you make it bloody red and add texture to it. Designing for a sci-fi flick? Then you will want to look at sans serif typefaces as they are common in this category due to their sharp and perfect edges, like the lettering that a computer might render as well as sleek chrome effects and lens flares. Um, Sci-fi can never get enough lens flares. Action movie posters tend to feature sans serif uh, squarish typefaces with right angles, bank gothic being a very popular choice. Pictures are also very common here, like metal, stone, fire, and grunge, depending on the film's themes. For the typography in our action movie poster, I'm going with the font blacklisted. It's bold and sharp and it has this nice accent going through the middle of the font face, which I felt really did a good job invoking the sand dunes. Now our title consists of two words, uh, dust and town. Let's place one of our words in front of the woman, but behind the child, and the other in front of the child. Typing the two words on their own layer so that they can be moved independently of each other. I'm going to then bring the same texture from the background into the type. Copying and pasting and then clipping both textures into the two title words. Keeping them set to overlay. Finally, I'm going to create and clip a new layer set to overlay into both the type layers. Using these layers to paint black on the edges of the words and white right in the middle, adding some contrast and a bit of lighting. Finally, our tagline and credits. Type the tagline in a font similar or in the same font to the title font. Um, here I'll be using Beebus as it is a very similar font but without the um, detail running through the middle. For my credits, I'm just using a generic template that can be found anywhere online. I'm setting them small and towards the bottom of the movie poster. Not so small that they are unreadable, but this should be the smallest set font on your poster. Now, jumping into the horror movie poster mockup, we are going even simpler, with our title set to Trajan um, Pro, placed directly over the light so that it is the main focus. And again, placing the credit template towards the bottom. And that finishes up the typography portion of the course. Remember, keep the title the main focus. That really is the biggest thing. Only add what is absolutely necessary and make it readable. No one should be squinting and wondering what exactly the title of your movie poster is. We have covered everything from composition to typography, but most of all we have looked at the various trends that seem to tie whole genres together. Designing posters of course requires artistic skill, but most of all it requires clear communication and selling tactics are king. But that doesn't mean all of your movie posters need to be so literal. Knowing the rules allows you to break them effectively. A prime example of this is shown in the work of Ali Moss, who uses flat illustration and minimalism to truly capture the essence of the film. Despite bucking most of the trends, these posters remain just as effective as the originals, if not more. Here are some tips and tricks you can take away with you. First, play with bold and vibrant colors that will grab your viewer's attention, especially in a sea of white and black backgrounds. Even if you're working on a horror movie poster, the contrast between the dark subject and vibrant colors could create a great contrast, leaving a lasting impression in that viewer's mind, which is what you want. Second, feature the most compelling subject of your movie. This may oftentimes be the hero, but it also could be the villain or a weapon or interesting building and location. It could even be something more abstract, like the sense of adventure. If you have a movie where your subject is going from place to place and place, and the adventure itself is the subject of the film. Finally, go abstract and minimal, showing only exactly what you need to show and nothing more. This can be so much more compelling and impactful than showing a group of actors and characters all shoved on the same poster, leaving a longer impression in that viewer's mind. You could also mix the two, a little old, a little new, mixing the trends with your very own design intuition. 
And as in Vital Elements has no shortage of graphics, photos, and fonts you can play with every movie genre and every poster style. Unlimited downloads, one monthly fee, and easy cancellation. A designer's dream. And with that, I think it's time to say our goodbyes. I hope to see you and your movie posters very soon. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Tuts Plus, and this was Movie Poster Design in Adobe Photoshop.